Hi, and I'm glad you could join me today. Welcome to our discussion on scatter plots and Pearson's linear correlation coefficient. A lot of people use scatter plots to look at the relationship between two variables using x, your explanatory variable, and y, your response variable. Now, there's three ways that we can look at the relationship between two variables. One, when there is perhaps no relationship at all. Two, when there is perhaps a linear or nonlinear relationship. And three, the one we're going to focus on today, is a linear relationship. So let's look at our first slide. What we're looking at is a scatter plot of club head speed is our explanatory variable and distance that the golf ball travels as our response variable. A scatter plot is simply a plot of the coordinate points for each subject in your data set. The next, okay, there it goes. The next slide is an example. It illustrates the difference between a positive linear relationship and a negative linear relationship. The first graph illustrates a positive linear relationship. As x increases, y increases. As x decreases, y decreases. The second graph illustrates a negative linear relationship. You see a downward slope and as x increases, y decreases. As x decreases, y increases. This next slide illustrates a scatter plot for a nonlinear relationship. You can see a distinct pattern in both graphs, but they're nonlinear. This third slide illustrates when there's no relationship apparent between the explanatory variable and the response variable. You see no effect in y when x changes at all. It looks more like just like a cloud that you would see on your scatter plot. Nothing discernible. So once we have this relationship, we know we have a relationship because we can see it on the scatter plot. We need to somehow quantitatively define the strength of the relationship. And we can do that. We can do that using Pearson's linear correlation coefficient. Now this is a great statistic. It gives you two pieces of information for your data set. It gives you strength, the strength of the relationship and direction, both positive and negative. So this linear correlation coefficient, uh, the computation can be somewhat complex. Let's look at the equation. What you're looking at is the equation for Pearson's linear correlation coefficient. It computes the measure of the strength of the linear relationship between our two variables. And as you can see through the equation, it sums up the difference between each x and y observation away from its mean divided by the standard deviation. Now, this linear correlation coefficient, it's a really great measurement in the fact that it allows us to look at the strength of the relationship. And this statistic goes from negative 1 to positive 1. Now, when you have a relationship close to positive 1 or negative 1, you have a very strong relationship. It's great because you can see how strong it is just by looking at this statistic, this one statistic. It's a measure of the linear strength of your data set, your x and y variables. So when you have an R value close to positive or negative 1, you know you have a really strong relationship between your explanatory variable and your response variable. And this is most of what we're looking for. We want this strong relationship. We want to use this relationship later on to perhaps predict with. So what you're looking for is just that, a strong R, a strong linear correlation coefficient. Now, as the value of R gets closer to zero, you find that you have a weaker relationship between X and Y. And this is what most of us are trying to avoid. We want a strong relationship. So the linear correlation coefficient is going to tell us just that, strength and direction. Let's look at our next slide. 
This is going to show us examples of positive correlation. Here we see a scatter plot where we can see with our eyes, visually we can see this strong relationship between X and Y. It's positive, we see as X increases, Y increases. And this set of data has an R of positive 0.8, indicating a strong positive relationship. This next scatter plot is a moderately positive relationship. R is 0.5, and as you can see as you look at the scatter plot, it's harder to tell. There's not as much visual strength when you look at the scatter plot. R is 0.5, it's closer to zero now, and we're finding a weakening in our relationship between X and Y. This last graph shows a very weak positive relationship between X and Y. We find that it has an R value of 0.1, very close to zero, very weak between X and Y, a very weak relationship. This next slide illustrates examples of negative correlation. This first graph shows a strong negative relationship between X and Y. You see a downward slope. There is a strong negative relationship and that's indicated by an R of negative 0.8. As X increases, Y decreases. As X decreases, Y increases. This next slide shows a moderately negative relationship. It has an R of negative 0.5. This is less easy to see on the scatter plot, less defined. It has an R of negative 0.5. It's farther away from negative 1. As you move towards 0, the relationship becomes weaker. This final graph shows a very weak negative relationship between X and Y. It's very difficult to discern on the scatter plot. It has an R of negative 0.1. It's still a negative relationship, but it's very weak. The R value is very close to zero. These scatter plots and linear correlation coefficients tell us so much information about our data set. It gives us information about the strength and direction of the linear relationship between x, our explanatory variable, and y, our response variable. This allows us to understand the relationship, the strength and direction of the relationship. I hope today's discussion has helped you to understand better scatter plots and Pearson's linear correlation coefficient. Thanks for joining us, and I hope to see you next time.